Or the Enfield Historical Society has had our Enfield history book, The Challenge of Change, Three Centuries of Enfield, Connecticut History by Ruth Bridge, digitized. But one of the problems is when you go to the link that's provided, it gets a little confusing. So hopefully this short video will help you out. If you get to this short video will also apply to any book on archive.org. When you get to this page here, you got this little book and you can click on it and it'll turn the page, but that's not going to do you much good. First thing you want to do is go up to the right hand corner here, click on full screen view. And now that's a little bit better. Now with this you can left click again and it'll turn the pages for you. And this well, this particular page is the the contents. Now you can view it like this, you can view it like this. Or you can view it like this. I recommend this particular view. And I'll tell you why in a minute. With this view, you can go up here in the right hand corner and click on the zoom until it's comfortable for you to read. And then to control the pages up and down, you can either use this, left clicking, gets a little, takes a little time to get used to it, or you can also use this down here at the bottom. Here's your page that you're on. If you're in this particular view, this one triangle view, I would probably go like this here. Another feature that they have is this up here. See this little speaker? You can click on that. To keep swine, a little later, later pigeon, pigeon was granted an additional 50 acres, provided he built a sawmill within three years. This is probably the sawmill on Freshwater Brook that was burned by Indians during King Philip's War. Through the years, a few more men were given grants of meadow land until 4 August 4, 1679. This entry appears. Arrangements made for. Click to stop it. Now, you could also do a search in here. Let's say one of the most popular people uh, in Enfield history is Pease. Click search. It'll show you all the places on the bottom here where Pease is mentioned. If you actually bring your cursor over, you can actually read in what context it was. If you want to actually go to the page, you click and it brings you to the page. That's pretty cool. Now if you want to, if you get lost and you want to start all over, you go back. And 
is those will book you down. Now, while you're here, you can also go down further, and you can download the book in a couple of different formats, not this. You can download it in full text. I re recommend that if you're going to download it, download it in PDF. This way, you uh, should be able to, uh, you can read it and search it offline. Quick review, we just click on full screen, set it in the mode you want, we can keep it in this mode, turn the page. Now there's also the feature, once you, once you do have it in the size that you want, there's this feature here, you can click on that, and it'll cover the whole, the whole page, but I don't recommend that view because you don't have much controls. I hope you get a chance to, uh, to read our NPO history book. Just while you're here, you might as well look at some of the stuff that's in there. It gives you the early years, the years of growth. There's a lot of different books on archive.org. Um, I would do a search and use the same that basic method to read them online. Hope this helps.